Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on risk and security related concepts. Today I'm going to be talking about the big picture of recovery, and then we're going to move on to some concepts and terms that you should know. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. We begin with the big picture of recovery. Standards and policies are used to help ensure that everyone is on the same page at the same time. All organizations should review their operations and create standards and policies that suit their needs. Once they are created, the standards and policies should be adhered to. This includes all of the information technology systems. By stressing the importance of standards and policies, risks to an organization can be reduced and security can be strengthened. All policies and standards should be reviewed on a periodic basis to help ensure that they remain relevant and be updated as necessary. One of the standards or policies that should be created is the Disaster Recovery Plan. A disaster is any event or emergency that goes beyond the normal response resources, as in an earthquake or a flood or a major fire. The longer a business is not able to function, the more damage is done. The Damage Recovery Plan, or DRP, detailed the steps to recover from a disaster situation, as in when the off-site backups need to be used or if a fallback site needs to be brought into operation. They also have sections dealing with how to help ensure employee safety. A sub-element of the DRP is the Business Continuity Plan, or BCP. A BCP includes an impact analysis of the business effects of down systems. The impact analysis helps to identify single points of failure in the business system. A BCP helps to prioritize what systems or processes need to be brought back first to get an organization operational again. It identifies mission-critical systems, processes, and data. The Business Continuity Plan helps to guide the creation of the Disaster Recovery Plan. Now let's talk about some concepts and terms that you should know. First up is Single Point of Failure. A single point of failure is a system or component that if it goes down has a major impact on operations. An example of a single point of failure is if a key router goes down and it prevents customers from ordering products, that's a single point of failure. Once identified, these failure points can be mitigated through several different methods, such as redundant systems as in adding a backup router to the previous example, or maybe a redundant power supply. Single points of failure can also be mitigated through system redesign, as in removing that point of failure through a redesign of the system. You should also be familiar with uninterruptible power supplies, or the UPS. A UPS will mitigate power issues that can have a negative impact on sensitive networking components. It conditions the incoming power to remove spikes and sags in the current, helping to ensure that the flow of current is even and consistent, which is very beneficial to your electronic and networking components. They also help to ensure the continued operation, at least for a given period of time, in the case of complete electrical power supply loss, as in an outage. Depending upon your UPS, you may be able to run for minutes, hours, or possibly days if you have a generator. First responders are the first people to discover or respond to a security issue. Ideally, it will be someone who has been properly trained in how to deal with the situation. Within the network security realm, first responders can play a key role in mitigating damage and collecting evidence. Then there's the concept of a data breach, which is any unauthorized access to data, particularly to sensitive data. Breaches may be unintentional or intentional. They may also occur from inside the network, so internally, or they may originate from an external source, so they may come from outside of your network. The severity of the breach is greatly determined by the sensitivity and the quantity 
of the data that's been accessed. Data breaches can be very expensive to organizations. They can result in a loss of reputation, which can lead to a loss of revenue. When it became known that Target lost sensitive customer information, you know, credit card information, people became unwilling or uncomfortable with shopping at Target. Even though they quickly fixed the breach, the results lingered on. A data breach may result in a loss of business secrets, which may cost that organization a competitive advantage. And finally, data breaches may result in fines or penalties levied by governments or other organizations. User awareness and training can greatly reduce your security risks. Quite often, the weakest link in the security chain is the end user. The risks can be reduced by making the users properly aware of security and security threats through awareness training and just security training in general. This training should be conducted on an ongoing basis. It's never a one and done thing. Penetration testing is the finding of weak spots and the hardening of systems. It is actively and aggressively testing the whole IT system in an effort to find weak spots. This can include using social engineering methods on your end users to find out if they are your weak link. The data generated is used to harden the IT system in an effort to mitigate future risks. Similar to penetration testing is vulnerability scanning. This is the finding of network holes and then plugging them. It's mostly done through the use of automated software. Networks are probed for vulnerabilities, as in open ports or unnecessary protocols. Once these ports or protocols have been identified, these holes into the network can then be plugged. But remember, you need to have authorization to perform vulnerability scanning, or you may be having an uncomfortable discussion with your security personnel. Now that concludes this session on risk and security related concepts. I talked about the big picture of recovery, and then I covered some concepts and terms that you should know. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.